Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray him for 122. On my heart and print your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. Over the past few years, there has been a seemingly unusual amount of division within our country. The presidential election put everyone on edge. Even with the two major parties, there was even division between which candidates should be the nomination for that particular party. Also, there have uh, been a great deal of racial division with the rise of Black Lives Matter as well as the alt-right movement. We are even seeing these divisions happen within sports teams where some players choose to kneel and others choose to stand. I would venture to say that in my short life, there has never been a time where our nation was more divided. In my short life, Sean, not the Civil War, I understand that was further greater division, but not within my lifetime. <laughs> These divisions aren't just limited to the public sphere either. We've seen a lot of vision, division within the church as well. Just yesterday, we celebrated the greatest division that the church has ever seen. From that one division, the church has continued to splinter and splinter. There, is, there are still more and more divisions today, even within the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. There are so many subgroups within our church body that it's becoming <coughs> impossible to keep track, and there are more and more popping up all the time. There are ultra-conservative groups, ultra-liturgical groups, ultra-liberal groups, ultra-happy groups, ultra-mad groups, and everywhere in between. Even in individual churches, there are different groups of people. Not here at Zion because we all get along and never disagree, but in other churches, there are different groups of people who either like the pastor or don't, or like one pastor and not the other, or there are groups that like the hymns and liturgy, and then there are other groups that wish we would sing something else. There are groups that want to see new changes to the church as it grows, and there are groups that want things to stay the same as they have always been. Even in individual families, we see divisions where the mom and dad go to different churches. Or maybe even the kids go to a different church than their mom and dad do. Or some even have families that don't go to church at all. Everywhere we look in this world, there are divisions. The devil likes nothing more than to divide and separate different people. If it weren't for the devil, the Reformation never would have needed to happen because the gospel would have been proclaimed and there would have been no need for the division. Yet the devil likes to constantly twist and manipulate God's word so that there are so many different understandings and beliefs that no one can seem to know what is correct. The devil loves division in the church and he loves division in society as well. He loves it when the children of God argue and fight with one another so that there is no peace and love left for anyone. He loves when there is so much hatred and animosity for one another that it causes people to lose their faith and neglect worship altogether. He loves when we are more concerned about arguing and fighting rather than being concerned about the proclamation of the gospel. In the Revelation to St. John, we see the perfect picture of heaven, however. He writes, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, 
Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. We see in this picture of heaven that there are no divisions. There are people from all over who speak different languages, who have different colored skin, who are all proclaiming the salvation comes from God and His Son, the Lamb. No matter what different things there could be that divide people, in heaven we are all united as baptized children of God who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There is nothing to argue about in heaven because all the saints are too busy standing around the throne in the temple of God. They are so focused on the Lamb upon the throne that they don't pay any attention to the flaws and shortcomings of one another and so they are united in worship. Here on earth we only have a taste of the heavenly worship as we join in the liturgy and celebrate the Lord's Supper. For a short time every Sunday we are able to put aside all our divisions and celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb which has no end. We approach the altar with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. All the saints from north, south, east and west all tribes, nations, and languages. And we receive the body of Christ given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. This is where the devil is defeated, and we are all united in the Holy Christian Church that surpasses all time and place. All our sins are forgiven, our differences are put aside, and we are united with the crucified Lamb upon the throne. Though we current, though we are currently in this great tribulation with all our sin, death, and division. We look forward to being united eternally around the throne of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. We join with all the baptized children of God from every tribe, nation, and language in proclaiming the glory of the Most High God, saying salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. He is risen. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.